Hello everybody, Matthew Street back with another video today. It's going to be a little bit different though. We are not actually going to go through and show a video game. Uh, I'm going to give you a quick tutorial. Uh, I have been trying to figure out a way to use Push to Talk for my TeamSpeak and also in GTA 5 Roleplay, the 5M servers, with my controller. I am a controller player, so it's nice being able to do that all on a controller and not have to be going back and forth to the keyboard as, uh, as much as I possibly can. Uh, so, I found a way to do it. I found a couple forums out there that were helpful, but they're kind of obscure and uh, a little bit difficult to navigate to see, but I found a way to do it. So, I'm going to show you how. First, you're going to go ahead and open up a browser. We are going to go to a website, but we'll just search for it in Google. We're going to do, uh, if I can type, that would help, Joy to Key. Now, it is uh, going to come up, and if you do spaces, hey, you sure it's not this one? It doesn't matter. It just doesn't technically have spaces in it. Uh, so, that's the site right there, joytokey.net. We will actually go in and uh, have this link in the description, so you'll see it below. Uh, when you pop here, it's simple. Just follow the prompts. You'll see this link. Download the latest version for free. It is open source, so there is no cost associated with it. Uh, you can also purchase a license if you want. I think once you click here, it'll also prompt you to do it. Um, so as it shows, that you can freely download it and evaluate it without any limitation of functionality, but after the trial, please consider doing it. Uh, I did not use it and then it came up asking for a license and then got rid of it and tried it again maybe you can i just went ahead and bought a license it literally took uh, two months it was like 60 days uh, so it is something that you ultimately may have to purchase uh, but you can start it for free uh, and then when i did get it it was ten dollars so it was it was nothing and uh, so i certainly do recommend it but that's a cool thing they'll let you try it out for a while too uh, but yeah you would just simply come through and then download what you need to get from it and uh, you're good to go so once you download it, just install it. I just used the uh, default locations. I, I didn't have to go in there and edit anything. I didn't see a need for it. Uh, a reason I first actually got it, I'll go ahead and pull that back up. I was typing this in earlier. Uh, I have a Logitech farm side panel or Logitech farm sim side panel. This is the exact one right here. You can even zoom in a little bit further on it and see. So it's pretty cool because like this button number four, I have it mapped so it uh, in LSPDFR that will open up my tablet. You know, these do my lights and sirens and all sorts of different functionalities. Uh, so all this software is is a keyboard emulator. So I'm going to go ahead and pop it open down here. It is called, again, Joy to Key. I've just got it set right down here in my uh, taskbar. Uh, there's when you first open it there's gonna be nothing over here it's gonna be blank these are just different profiles that I have set up for different games um, what I did is I went in and created one here called RSA DPS that's for Royal San Andreas Department of Public Safety that is the name of the 5M community I'm a part of and yes it did take me about 68 days before I could say that acronym properly without any problem even though I could just read it right here so I could have cheated but this is what you're gonna see nothing here so what you would do is go file new Let's go ahead and set up a new one. We'll just call this one RSA DPS2. How about that? Cool. So, uh, as you see, it shows joystick one, joystick two. That's because it actually sees two joysticks plugged into my computer right now. This first one is that farm simulator I was talking about. That second one, I need to actually grab it, is my PlayStation controller. Where is it? Where did I put it? I put it down there. That's a new one for me. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go and click on this. And as you see, if I start clicking on different buttons here, that's you know me pushing R1, L1, R2, L2, so forth. It lights up. That's It's showing, hey, this is that mapping. Okay? So what we're going to do is go ahead and set this up as if we're going to be using this with our TeamSpeak. Uh, I like to use up on the D-pad for the TeamSpeak. So I press up on the D-pad. That tells me which button it is. I just have to double-click it. And then here you see your options. You can do up to four mappings at once. So let's say we just wanted to do one, two, three, and four. And then hit OK to save it. If I press up on the D-pad, now of course you see it did all that noise in the background because it's if I just hit one, two, three, four on my keyboard, um, it will do all those at once. We just need to clear that because I don't want it. What I do have set up, I'll go ahead and pull it up for you, is my TeamSpeak client. I have that set in my tools and my options. Then you go to capture, it's already there. It is set for push to talk. And I have it so for me to push to talk, I have to press and hold on the right alt key. So if you need to find out what it is in TeamSpeak, you probably already know it since you're already using it. So you know which one you have to go in there and press. But again, you just go to tools, go to options, and then go to capture and you'll see it. So what are we gonna do? Right alt. So we're gonna come back over, we'll just go close that out. Come back over to joy to key. It's highlighted. All I have to do is press right alt on my keyboard. There you go. It is now 
right alt. So anytime I press up on the D-pad, it's going to press the right alt key for me. So if I want to talk in game, or excuse me, not in game, but in TeamSpeak, what I have to do is just press and hold on that up D-pad, and then I can be speaking through TeamSpeak. And then when I'm done, just simply let go. However, I have it set up one step further. If you go back into it, there's this option at the bottom called toggle between on and off. I'm going to go ahead and select that and hit OK. Now, it's not going to show it when I do it here. I'm just going to press up on the D-pad once. Okay, see, it just popped up and went away. But in reality, it's as if I'm holding down on that right alt key. So in TeamSpeak, when you're actually chatting, for those that use it, you'll know. For those that don't, you can figure it out when you do get there. It shows your name, and when you're chatting, there's a little blue like circle next to it. It's shaded out, but when you're actually speaking, you're holding down on your push to talk key, in our case, the right alt key, it's lit up. So by me pressing that up alt key once, or excuse me, that up D-pad once, that's as if I'm actually holding down on the right alt key. To simply act as if I'm lifting my finger off that, guess what? All you do is hit up on the D-pad again. That's all there is to it. So all I did was went in here and found out what button I use for TeamSpeak, right alt, and then I came in to, I want to use that for the up on the D-pad. Well, let's say I want to use that by clicking in on the right analog stick, okay? So I'm going to do that in this software. So I can see what button that is. As you see, it's button 12. You can maybe even hear me clicking on my controller. So we would come in here and map that to whatever you want it to be. The only thing that can get tricky is obviously your controller has mappings in the game itself. So for instance, the up on the D-pad for me in the GTA 5 roleplay is nothing when I'm on foot. It does absolutely nothing. When I'm in a car, if my lights are turned on, my actual emergency lights, then it will toggle a siren. So that's the only thing where it could get a little funky. And if I've actually got lights on and I'm, I'm rolling and I need team speak like that, I'm more than likely am going to not care about that siren anyway because that's actually the secondary siren. When you're playing that, if you hit left on the D-pad, that turns your lights on. Down on the D-pad turns your siren on. The up D-pad is just a secondary siren. If you aren't running the primary, then, well, that is your primary button at that point. But Never mind, that's not really a big deal, other than just to explain that. You do have to be careful with your mappings, because your controller already has things mapped in-game. So, for instance, if we were going to do, uh, let's say, R2 on the PlayStation, or right trigger on the Xbox, well, that's your fire button. So, if you're holding a gun, and you press that, well, it's going to fire the gun. Or if you aren't even holding a gun, it will take a punch, a swing, you know, either in the air or at the nearest object. So you want to be careful what it is. So I found up on the D-pad is really useful for me. I did also have it set up to where when I click in on that right analog stick, again, that's button 12. I originally had that set up for in, and is in November. I'll go ahead and do that. We'll just do toggle between on and off. I'm going to go ahead and press it. You'll hear probably a desktop noise of mine because it's mapped for something else on my desktop. Yep, sure enough. But that's like I just pressed down on it. Now, same thing. Like I said, I had it toggled, so when I pressed it once, it would activate me talking in-game, so all I had to do was press it again, and then that would cut it off. The reason I went ahead and canceled that one, so I cleared all, then hit OK, is because, uh, A, in our particular server, when you're speaking, it will show a little blue halo around your feet. The problem is only for other people. So they'll see me speaking, but I can't see myself speaking. If they're speaking, that blue halo is around their feet. But again, if I'm doing it, that's not there. The only way I can tell is if I physically look at my character's face and see if his mouth is moving. Um, also, it was causing kind of some other funky things. I know if I hold down on the R stick in-game, that makes me uh, look behind me. But it was causing a couple other things, and that's all me because I have some different key bindings. It's not the software or 5M. Uh, so I may play with that one, but I wasn't as concerned about the speak in-game because anytime I'm doing that, I'm going to be on foot anyway, and I'm probably up at the keyboard doing stuff in the text chat, so that's not a big deal to me. The big one for me was that up D-pad so I can do, go to team speak. A and what's nice is, like I was saying earlier, you know when you're speaking when you're not. So that would be the only thing to be careful of with that one is just have team speak open where you can see it if you're lit up and talking or not. That way you can make sure you turn it off. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, these people don't sponsor me anything. I just wanted to make sure that y'all did see uh, how I got it set up, and I do use that application. Again, it's free initially. Uh, for me, it was, I think, a 60-day trial. I went ahead and paid the 10 bucks after that. But if anything, give it a shot and see if you like it. Uh, one other note, what's cool, it doesn't make it so this is your only keyboard option. It just sees these as additional keyboards plugged in. So it's not like when you've got this activated, your keyboard isn't going to work or you have this activated, only your PlayStation controller will work. 
No, it's gonna see all three right now. My side panel, my PlayStation, as well as my keyboard. The only other one important thing to note is for it to work, you just have to have the software open. You don't even have to map the software and say, okay, for this particular profile, I want you to work in 5M, or I want you to work in Red Dead 2 or GTA, whatever it may be. It automatically is gonna see that it's just a keyboard, because that's all it is, it's a keyboard. As long as those games are keyboard enabled, then it's gonna see it. But the application does have to be open. If you just close it with the X, that actually doesn't close it. You have to actually go to File, then Exit. Now it's closed. But if you do try to start a game and it's not working, it's because it didn't open. You can just, you don't even have to exit the game. I can't tell you how many times I've started a game and forgot to actually put that in there. So all I did was, you know, minimize the game, came here, opened it, you're good to go. So that's all there is. Uh, if you do have any questions about it, certainly let me know in the comments. Uh, reach out to me. I'll be happy to answer them for you. I, again, I hadn't seen uh, really any good videos on this, but here's you a, uh, a good source for it. Hopefully you uh, you appreciate it. And again, if you did like it, uh, go ahead and uh, like, subscribe. Uh, yeah, well, if I could say it, that would help. But you know what I'm talking about. Subscribe, notify, all that. So thank you all very much for watching, and you all have a wonderful rest of your day.